killing enough of them? We're killing a lot of them, and we're going to keep killing more of them. So are the Egyptians, so are the Jordanians. They're in this fight with us. But we cannot win this war by killing them. We cannot kill our way out of this war. We need in the longer term, medium and longer term, to go after the root causes that leads people to join these groups, whether it's lack of opportunity for jobs. We're not going to be able to stop that in our lifetime or 50 lifetimes. There's always going to be poor people. There's always going to be poor Muslims. And as long as there are poor Muslims, the trumpets blow and they'll join. We can't stop that. Well, uh, when, when Chris Matthews is against you, you know uh, you're in trouble if you're in the administration. Joining us now is Ian Tuttle, member of the National Review Editorial Board and William F. Buckley Fellow at National Review. And uh, Ian, yesterday um, I, I, I likened uh, Maria Harf to a college sophomore who had just was on TV explaining her term paper on how to battle ISIS. And, um, you know, you, you wrote a great piece, and I'm going to give the title of it from Na at National Review Online out today, Lucy and Ethel Take Foggy Bottom. Of course, you're also referring to Jen Psaki. Uh, which one is which? Which one is Maria, Lucy or Ethel? Oh, geez. Uh, they're both doing, both doing their best to, to uh, put on this hilarious song and dance routine every single day. So. There is no gravitas. Your point is there's no gravitas there. This is, a, this is the most serious uh, uh, issue that we faced in, in, in decades, and, and, and you've got these two people uh, that, that, like I said, look like they're you know, college students um, that have to go watch their favorite show. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, look, we, can, uh, we have a piece up at our website today saying that you know, maybe if you look into it, Harp is not completely wrong that there are medium and longer term things that we need to be looking into, but they won't offer the initial concession, which is that this is Islamic radicalism. We need to get those two words out there from the administration, and then we can begin to talk about all of these other things that we need to do in the medium to longer term. But really, this is just warmed over Marxism that you'll find you know, from, from college poli-sci students at Wisconsin, Madison, and Boulder, and Berkeley. Warmed over Marxism. Well, I mean, all that they all they think is is <clears throat> essentially, well, the, the the same argument that Marie Harf is applying here is is what they've uh, applied to poverty in the United States, uh, crime in the United States forever and ever, which is that it's all really a product of social circumstance of uh, economic opportunity and if you can just you know get a gap store or a mcdonald's in the area and get these people jobs everything is going to work out but this it's absurd uh you know there there is one one point to be made is that uh christians in syria and iraq are not uh the ones beheading their fellow citizens so you really have to once you start <laughs> Parsing those uh, those small details, yeah. uh, you see that this type of argument is just lunacy. Right, and and of course you you wrote. And by the way, when I said they look like they have to go, I mean it's their whole presentation. It's it's right. it's it's. It, it, I'm sorry, there's there's just no the the gravitas. As I said before, there's nothing there, and these like these the what they say is just off the wall. And again, I know they're spewing the, the company line, the administration line. And the administration line, when it comes to, you mentioned the Christians, the cops that were slaughtered and beheaded in Libya, uh, a, a country that we handed over to the terrorists, by the way, um, the president in a statement couldn't even say that Christians were killed. He called them Egyptian citizens, and you wrote a piece on that. It's extraordinary. It, you have these people who are martyred for their faith, and the administration won't even come out and honor that uh, by 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 saying exactly who they were. This is just some sort of, uh, just another ish, uh, episode of sectarian conflict or some such. Um, it's, it's baloney. And it's but, really but, but, but the it's same dangerous. White House, Ian, the same White House, uh, even though there's no proof and has been no proof, uh, in, more than implied, uh, that the three Muslim students who were killed in North Carolina were killed because who they were, how they worshipped, and how they looked. That's right. That's right. And that... Uh, situation is tragic, but uh, as you say, there's no evidence to suggest that it has anything to do with uh, the students' religious beliefs. Look, the, the, the administration wants to peddle a very particular type of narrative, and for whatever reason, they think that either the American people are just going to, to go stark raving mad if they put the actual title 
uh, the actual names of these people, the actual if they actually identify the motive for their beliefs, or they genuinely believe that this has nothing to do with Islam, despite the fact that it's the Islamic State uh, run by people who quote the Koran uh, right before they and, behead and, their latest victims. And the latter scenario, Ian, is, I'm sure you would agree, is just uh, unfathomable. That, that, that's incomprehensible. It doesn't make any sense. So there, there's more at work here. Keep up the great work. Love reading it. Thanks for coming on, sir. Thanks, Steve. All right, Ian Tuttle, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when we come back, author of In Mortal Danger, The Battle for America's Border and Security, former Congressman Tom Tancredo will be here. Don't go away.